This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley above at the top of the screen. Everything we're talking about here today. All right, so we're going to start with, uh, well, first of all, we're going to go over the notion of the dollar standard, the global reserve currency status of the U.S. dollar being dead. And the idea and notion that with what Ripple and what Ripple has done with the implementation of XRP and, by the way, with the market infrastructure that's been put together by Ripple for all of the top banks and industry players in finance and in the derivatives world, clearing and settlement. We're just going to take a look at the notion that maybe we're getting ever so close to that day actually coming. Okay, so we start with Peter Schiff from Zero Hedge here. Uh, warns that the world is ready to reject the dollar standard. Peter Schiff recently did a presentation at Endeavor Silver Town Hall webinar. He talked about the state of the economy in the U.S. dollar, gold and silver. Full disclosure, Peter Schiff is a big gold guy. Peter said that he thinks we're about to see a gold bull market rivaling a 19, the 1970s because the world is going to reject the dollar standard and go back to a gold standard. This is not the first time this conversation has come up, ladies and gentlemen, right? We know that Judy Shelton is waiting in the wings. She needs a full floor Senate vote. And they say that she does have the votes to pass. Why they haven't voted on her yet, I don't know. But they do say that she does have the votes to pass, where Judy Shelton would be then confirmed if they do the vote to the Federal Reserve as a chairman, and she does want to, uh, she does subscribe to a gold standard in a cryptocurrency way, and it's essentially introducing a new financial instrument, a gold-backed bond that would back the major currencies of the world, and you could have that be redeemable, let's say, for a five-year term uh, for the actual gold instead of the cash from that particular nation. This would help to keep a what she calls a level playing field on the fact that you could redeem the bond for the gold instead of that country's cash. So that way, if there was any currency manipulation that went on, you could receive the gold and you would not be affected by that. So with that notion, I want to move to a broader idea of what we talked about here, just opening this up, which is the idea and understanding that Ripple has been building the infrastructure and the financial plumbing, not only for cross-border payments, remittance world, but for banks, we know that Brad Garlinghouse has said that they are clearly behind the wall, the, uh, the firewall of the banks. I don't believe for an instant that, you know, they're not talking and working with the CFTC and the SEC. They said from day one that they have worked closer with every regulatory agency than any other project coin company or company out here in the blockchain crypto space. And it is pretty self-evident over the years that that is exactly true, and that is exactly the way they've approached what they do. Now, the next thing I want to look at here is a little clip from the Washington Journal, or Wall Street Journal, excuse me. Um, new pact will help derivatives markets. The EU and the U.S. are committed to sound regulation. Now, you guys know that First of all, the world's derivative market saw more than $640 trillion in trading activity in the first six months of 2019 alone. Did you get that number? $640 trillion in trading activity in the first six months of 2019. Now, I want to take you down here because 
this here is some speculation on my part, but I believe we have to read the tea leaves and try to understand what exactly is happening here. After refreshing dialogue between our two sides more than a year ago, the EU and the U.S. have now determined and are implementing a mutually beneficial set of step steps to promise clear, predictable, and sound regulation and supervision for derivative central counterparties. We each have our respective mandates. The EU authorities and the CFTC both have primary regulatory supervisory authority over derivative central counterparties domiciled in our jurisdictions and operating in on our markets. So, it is saying, if you look here, the EU authorities and the CFTC both have primary regulatory and superver- supervisory authority over derivatives, central counterparties domiciled, existing and living in our jurisdictions and operating on our markets. Now, the interesting thing there is, is back in 2018, one of the first videos I ever did, I think it was like the second or third video I ever did was a minute and 14 seconds. I got part of it right and part of it wrong, but I'm going to play the first 48 seconds for you here and listen to this. Hey guys, how you doing? I just wanted to uh, take a second and show you something that I found here. Uh, This is from the U.S. Commodity Futures Trade Commission. And if you look down in the middle paragraph here, and if you go down about the middle way of that paragraph, you'll see that it says, It is no leap of the imagination to consider how automation could help reduce cost and bring efficiencies to trade matching, processing, and clearing and settlement indeed. When paired with systems inspired by DLT that standardize and distribute data to market actors. When you look at that, if you don't know, DLT stands for Distributed Ledger Technology. There's only one company or... Well, and that's where I made the mistake. At the time, I thought that there was only one company that was DLT, when in fact there's many coins out here that are DL, distributed ledger technology. But the reality is what I what should have, what should have been said there, and I give myself a learning curve because I just started the channel and was learning on as, as we go, um, as much of all of us are, right? But distributed ledger technology to standardize the data and the market actors. And basically, it's the CFTC acknowledging that they were going to upgrade their infrastructure to distributed ledger technology, blockchain. And there is no one in this space that has been working closer with the regulators than Ripple and XRP. No one. And I dare you to find them and bring it to me. I'll wait. And here is a 2018 document that is at the same time frame that I did that video and found that .gov, cftc.gov uh, uh, typing or, or a PDF at the time that had suggested they will be upgrading at some point to distributed ledger technology for the ease of data settlement and the market makers and the people participating in the markets, right, to the new system, to the new infrastructure. Really, which puts me back to why I brought this article in today from the Wall Street Journal talking about a new pack to help the derivatives market, because here they may be talking about rules and regulations, but at the same time, I just wanted to highlight a couple years ago, they were talking about straight up infrastructure and changing to a new system. And this backs that up. The conclusion in 2018 here was simply to reach uh, the reach of DLT is potentially expansive and holds out the promise of introducing deeply transformative changes into any process. Cryptography is the key for DLT success and smart contracts can facilitate a protected and automated processes. Existing trusted technology and platforms likely to play a significant role bringing the newer technologies forward. The technology of virtual currency can be adopted in traditional financial markets. And the regulation and authority of financial markets can be applied to virtual currency. New networks take time, require incentives to ramp up, and existing networks may also need rule changes or legal regulatory framework evolution. Well, I think we've all come to know that the last one is certainly true, right? So we'll keep an eye on it. Now, this gets more interesting as we go on. Shout out to Ant1 and shout out to... uh, uh, 
uh, V8 Staffy, who sent this to me also, um, Swift to create new cross-border real-time rails. Really? <laughs> well, this is interesting. We're going to need to drill down on this article for sure. Swift outlines a strategy. If you remember, before we get into this, uh, Swift said, you know, it's 23, 24, 25, you know, we're years away from where we need to be here. Well, wait till we sum this up. Interbank Payment Network Swift is to expand beyond pure play financial messaging to offer member banks a range of transaction management services. Operating over a two-year time frame, the new strategy is aimed at enabling financial institutions to deliver instant and frictionless end-to-end -end transactions. The cooperative uh, is building a new digital platform that will use APIs, cloud technology, cloud technology we're going to come we're going to come back to that to provide a set of common processing services that banks have historically invested in individually new and extensive data capabilities will enable the pre-validation of ex essential data fraud detection data analytics transaction tracking and exception case uh, exception case management in payments, this equates to value-added services that banks can provide to both businesses and consumers, and securities financial institutions will benefit from improved reconciliation, reporting, and asset service processes, as well as end-to-end -end visibility of transactions to reduce settlement, fails, and fines. So, going into this uh, last section here, let's just check this out really quickly here, because I'm pulling up something at the same time to make sure that we can... I, I want to be able to share this with you also as we go through the rest of this document. So, okay. So looking at this, Javier Pierre, uh, Perez, CEO of Swift says, we are innovating the underlying infrastructure that financial institutions use. We are innovating the underlying infrastructure that financial institutions use to make transactions run even faster end to end and at the same time further reducing costs for the community through industry shared services in the area of cyber fraud and compliance. We are creating a broad platform with faster technology and smarter, better services that the industry can trust as a foundation for innovation towards their own end clients. The fresh approach has received support from SWIFT's biggest members. Manish Kohali, uh, Global Head of Payments and Receivables City, says uh, with its new platform strategy, SWIFT is evolving from just making in in incremental improvements to its traditional store and forward messaging capabilities and towards truly transformative change based on API dynamic connectivity and vastly improved data model and extremely relevant payment orchestration services, this reimagined SWIFT platform builds on the progress of GPI. I want to say that again. This reimagined SWIFT platform builds on the progress of GPI and moves us towards our desired end to state of payment ubiquity with the ability to make frictionless and instant cross-border payments across the SWIFT network. Stefan Hoop says, uh, Managing Director of Head of Corporate Bank and Deutsche Banks, as it is good news that SWIFT is evolving from being a messaging carrier to a provider which supports our own Deutsche Bank transaction platform for international payments. Speedy, secure, and compliant transaction management fits perfectly with our clients' workflow and needs. We plan to connect SWIFT's cooperative industry-wide solution with our own products, clients, and services that manage payments for all types of financial institutions, corporates, and fintechs. So, this sounds to me like they're rolling out the ability to press on a lot sooner than they had said just a short time ago. Now, I want to take this opportunity to remind you of a couple of things. We know that GPI can certainly interface with R3 and the quarter platform, and the quarter settler is uh, a digital settlement option of the use of XRP. It's a settlement option for payment that anybody that builds on the quarter platform that could interface with GPI and SWIFT that needs that access could certainly use the quarter settler, which settles with the digital asset XRP. We also know, what else do we know? Well, I'll tell you what else we know. 
Ripple just recently was brought in to shape the future of cross-border payments to the world is converging on a new global standard called ISO 2022, the de facto global data standard for modern payments. To help enable this next step in global interoperability and meet the evolving needs of our customers, Ripple is now a part of the ISO 2022 standards body. The first member focused on distributed ledger technology. Join us for the shift to the future. Learn more about ISO 2022 and how Ripple is helping shape the new world of payments, all while reducing operational overhead for financial institutions on RippleNet. Let me say this. <laughs> Remember when we talked about the part in here where it talked about cloud-based solutions, right? And cloud-based platforms. You know, this is what we're talking about here. RippleNet is a cloud-based solution. And truthfully, they could absolutely, it says here, the cooperative is building a new digital platform that will use APIs and cloud technology to provide a set of common processing services that banks have historically invested in individually. So, look, I'm just going to throw it out there. You know, why not have RippleNet become that ISO 2022 standards uh, uh, protocol and and de facto standard for SWIFT where applicable. Between R3 and RippleNet, which, by the way, RippleNet is a cloud-based services with all the partners on it, has all the governance and compliance built right into that cloud services platform. So, you know, I don't find it any coincidence at all that Ripple recently brought onto the ISO 2022 standards body. And now we're hearing that Swift is pushing forward to go beyond its normal framework and normal offering as just basically a messaging service. What does it all mean? Where does it all end up? I don't know, but I've said it before. I believe that Ripple Net not Ripple, but RippleNet is the new digital arm or will become the new digital arm of Swift, whether it's acquired, merged, partnered, however you want to say it. I believe that because all the members on RippleNet are banks. And I also believe that because Swift is privately owned by banks. <laughs> It's not much of a stretch at my house. So that's where I'm at with that. Now, to go back to the U.S. dollar, I don't think the U.S. dollar goes away. But I do believe now more than ever, there is a real risk of the U.S. dollar losing its global reserve status. And if that's the case, what's the option? Let another country like China take the role of the global reserve currency status? Or to have an American company like Ripple, a blockchain infrastructure company, allow you to be in a position to where you can adopt an asset that was created by that American company and place that between everybody's currency and begin using it in a new financial monetary system. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Make sure you share with somebody you know. This just keeps getting bigger and it just keeps getting better. So make sure you keep your eye on the ball and I will catch you all on the next one.